Hey guys, what I've got here is the start of my new PC build. It's been about three years since I last built a PC. I'm still using that PC, it's actually what I'm using right now, but it's not slow, but it's certainly not fast by today's standards for gaming or for video editing. So I have picked up most of the components. I'm still waiting for another SSD and an all-in-one cooler and different things, but I do have most of the components to get started. So what I'd like to do in this video is show you the motherboard and the CPU. But I'm not going to be delving deep here. This really is a quick look, guys. In the future, I'll look at the BIOS and I'll do some tests with, you know, all the components. But in this video, I really just want to show you this Gigabyte Aorus X570 Masterboard. And I'd like to show you this AMD Ryzen 5950X. And I'd like to talk about why I actually chose these. So before I open the box, etc., I just want to quickly talk about both parts. The Ryzen 9 5950X. Very easy decision for me to pick this. I could have been down the Threadripper route, which is what a lot of video editors do because you get so many cores and it really does destroy video rendering. It makes it so simple to render videos. It greatly reduces times. But this Ryzen 9 chip is fantastic for video editing too, but it's also great at gaming and it's just a great all-round chip. So it was an easy decision to pick that. It's a little bit different with the motherboard. It, I took a while to decide which one to go for. Now, I am familiar with this brand. The motherboard in my current PC is an X, oh, sorry, a Z370 uh, Gaming 7. So it's a gaming Aorus board and I've never had any problems with it. So I, I was familiar with the brand. I have been happy with the brand. But there was a lot of things that came into my decision as to which one to buy. And this does have a lot of fantastic features, but it does lack some features that I did want. I was looking for 10 gigabit ethernet, that would have been good. And I would have liked Thunderbolt to be uh, integrated as well. Unfortunately, there's only like two boards that actually support Thunderbolt 3 directly into the board in the AMD world right now. And they're not great boards in my opinion. So I'm not gonna bore you with all these specs, but have a look at them yourself if you wanna learn more about this board. It's got really good reviews, solid reviews. It's fantastic for overclocking. As you can see here, it's got three M2 uh, drive slots here as well, which we'll have a look at. And yeah, it's just a great performance. It's got really good reviews. This is the second top gigabyte board. And after you go beyond this, you go to the extreme board, which is way too expensive. You know, this board cost me 330 pounds. The next board up is like 750. It's crazy. What I will say though, is that this one does have good support for overclocking. And you can see that here. It can support memory up to 5100. Now, obviously, you know, that's a different discussion, but once you go over 3600 in these uh, AMD CPUs, you have to mess around with the Infinity Fabric and different things, and you have to do other things to kind of overclock it properly, but it, it can support it as there, and it, you know, it's perhaps future-proofing myself in that regard. One thing I will point out, though, is that you'll see when you look on the website for this board uh, is that this has got a revision one, and there's a revision... 1.1 and 1.2. Now this is something to take into account whenever you're buying anything really, but especially motherboards, because what computing companies will do is they'll release a motherboard and the bigger companies especially, they sometimes do a second, third, or even fourth revision. Sometimes those revisions are minor. Sometimes it's to address bugs. Sometimes it's simply because they're trying to save money. Bizarrely, sometimes they remove features, other times they add it. Now, it's worthwhile pointing this out because one of the reasons that I bought this board is because it's one of the few boards that actually supports uh, this this Thunderbolt 3 add-on. Now, there's actually a revision of this, a 2.0 uh, Thunderbolt 3 card from Gigabyte, but this Gigabyte card here is supported by this board. But you can see down here, it's supported by the Aorus Master 1.1. Now, I did have a minor panic attack after I ordered it because the sales page didn't tell me if I, if I had revision 1.0, 1.1, or 1.2, but I had a look at the manual and it says that if you look down here at the corner, it tells you the revision. So I had a sneaky peek already and I checked down here and it does show me that it is revision 1.2. So I have the latest version of that of the board. That's very good news for me, um, but it is something to bear in mind. There is something to bear in mind in general. Just pay attention to the revisions because sometimes the features are a little bit different. Version 1.0 or 1.0 of this board does not have any Thunderbolt 3 adapter on the board, so you can't attach the PCI Express card for Thunderbolt 3. Um, but you'll find that with other boards as well, with the revisions, sometimes change things, sometimes for the better, sometimes not. But bear, pay attention to that and do your research as always. Um, 
Again, check all the specifications for this to learn more about this board. There's so many features that I really can't talk about them all. But if I am going to be talking about these features, let's talk about them as I open this up. So let's get going. Okay, so here we have the motherboard, the actual box. I'll put that to the side just for a second. Um, and then we've got all the accessories and different things. So I'm going to just take this out. So I have the board out of the way, so I can have a closer look at everything here. And if you've never bought a motherboard yourself and you've always bought pre pre-made motherboards, pre-made PCs, you might be a little bit bamboozled by all the different components that you have here. Bear in mind that some of these are essential, some of them are not, and some of them are kind of doublers as to, you know, maybe you'll pick up some of these accessories when you buy a hard drive or when you buy a, a graphics card or something else. So you get stickers here. Okay, not exactly something that I care about. What I do care about, uh, installation guide and the manual. And again, word of advice, my God, they've got a CD. <laughs> I can't believe they've gave me a CD. Fair play to them. Uh, what I would say, uh, in, in many situations, the manual is something that you don't check and something that you throw away, etc. Keep the motherboard manual. Keep it. This is something that you will refer to time and time again. And yes, you can download it online. You can get the PDF. But I'll tell you from experience, the motherboard manual is something I refer to many, many times just to check what everything was, just to understand the layout. And you can use this to refer to the actual design of the motherboard and see what everything is because you'll look at the board and you'll think, what the hell is that? And then you go to the, the, the manual and it'll all become clear. So it's good that they've got good documentation there. And like I said, I have bought a motherboard from Gigabyte before. It's generally pretty well written. So I am referring to the trusted manual already. You've got the motherboard layout there. There's instructions on how to install a CPU cooler and many different things, installing memory. It's all good. But what we want to see here is box contents on page six, and it does help you figure out what's going on here. Down here, we've got uh, you know various standoff screws, which is what you set the motherboard on, and you've got M2 screws. Here, we've got two thermistors cables. We've got here, which is a little bit surprised, we've got a noise detection cable. That's pretty cool as well. We've got an LED strip adapter and extension cable. And here, we've got the G connector. That's something you will need, and it's what helps you connect your motherboard to the power button in your case and the speaker and different things, power LED. Up here, we've got four SATA cables. We've got Velcro uh, ties there for kind of just tidying up your cables. And here we've actually got the Wi-Fi because this has Wi-Fi 6 built in, which is good for me because in my existing PC, it didn't have it. So I had to buy a network card for that. So yeah, all good here. Now we're on to the most important part the motherboard itself and it's in a really nice wrapper and it's all protected by foam so everything should be okay you can actually get it out here we go so this is it this is the gigabyte x570 oris master board i've taken off this paper which was over here looks like there's another little one here here we go get that off and yes, this is the board, and I do appreciate that most boards are black, and most of them aren't that exciting to look at, but I think this board does look good. It looks like it's made with good components, and that's one of the first things I kind of realized is when I picked it up, it's actually quite heavy. It feels like a high-quality component, and I realized there are a lot cheaper boards in the market, but this does feel good, and it does feel like I've got value for money here. So what I'd like to do at this point is just kind of go around the board and show you some of the key components. At the back here, we've got the CPU backplate. And this is something you might have to work with if you select an all-in-one CPU cooler rather than an air cooler. Because a lot of all-in-one coolers attach to uh, the plate here and they kind of fix it to the backplate there. So just bear that in mind in case you put this board onto your computer and then you have to take it out to attach it. What I'd like to show you now before I show you the rest of the board what I'd like to show you is the back panel. And if I zoom in, hopefully I'll be able to see that better. Okay. So this is the back panel. If you're building a PC and you're just using it for gaming and you're only connecting one or two things, this probably doesn't matter to you. And it doesn't matter to a lot of people. But to me, this part did matter because I do connect a lot of hard drives, a lot of cameras, a lot of different things. So starting at the left here, we've got the clear CMOS button. 
very, very useful to see. And, you know, obviously back in the day, we used to have to do that on the board. Then we've got the Q flash button. Again, this is extremely useful. This is going to allow you, if I switch to the browser, this is going to allow you to flash your BIOS to upgrade, to recover, to just fix things very easily. And you don't have to have your computer all set up to actually do that. So that's very useful. Now, if you were doing that, if you were flashing the BIOS, you have to attach it to this USB 3.0 port. So there's two USB 3s here, but this one also doubles as, well, basically the port where you would flash your BIOS. You put into the file into a USB flash drive, you stick it in here, and then you'd push the button, good to go. So here we've got the connectors for the Wi-Fi 6 uh, antenna, and this is how you get Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5 through the board. Then we've got four USB type A. These are all USB 2.0. As I said, we've got two USB 3.0 here, and then we've got three USB 3.1 in red. And these are all obviously type A, but there is a USB 3.1 type C port here as well. At the right hand side, we've got basically all the audio ports. We've got mic, line in, line out, etc. Here, here we've got Intel one gigabit ethernet, and here we've got a uh, Realtek 2.5 gigabit. So looking at this back panel for my you know, for my own use, I would have preferred five or 10 gigabit ethernet. And I really didn't need four USB 2.0 ports. Certainly when you compare this to some other boards on the market around this price range, you know, in the kind of 300 to 400 range, a lot of other boards have got more USB 3.0, more USB 3.1. Putting in four USB 2.0 uh, ports, a little bit bizarre, but Gigabyte have actually decided to do this with their 750 gigabyte extreme. So even in the most expensive board, they have four USB 2.0. I'm sure I can use it. You know, there's a lot of different things I can use it for, you know, connecting mice and keyboards and different things, but I would have preferred, you know, USB 3.0 or USB 3.1 or something. But there you go. There's always a sacrifice. So I'll spin it around this way, maybe a little bit easier to see. And whenever you look at a board for the first time, you know, even if you're familiar with uh, building computers, there's always a port or two that you're not sure of. So again, like I said, go back to the trusty uh, manual and just refer to uh, the layout here. And it really does help you see where everything is. You've also got the power for the CPU up here. You've got the main ATX power here. You've got the power and reset buttons up here. Obviously this is a CPU, but this is where the memory goes as well. So down here, we've got three M2 slots and you can see they've all got thermal guards, so that's really good to see as well. Although this one is obviously a little bit smaller, this M2, um, because you've got the X1 here. So in that regard, we've got three X16s, we've got the X1. Now, check the website to clarify what's going on here, because it is different. For every motherboard that you pick, it's a little bit different. But this one has three X16s, as you can see, size-wise. The first one runs at X16, the second one will run at X8 and both of those go through the CPU. The X4 and the X1 will run through the, the chipset. If you go down here, you can see it's running through the chipset. Now, the, the way that this is all set up also depends on the, the generation of the Ryzen CPU that you've got. So just check that. Check that everything is, is working correctly for you from a bandwidth point of view and make sure you've got everything set up correctly. I don't think that's something that's gonna matter for many of you. You just wanna plug something in, but yeah, this is where you would put your graphics card and you can use these for network cards. Well, you wouldn't need a network card, but different accessories, etc. So again, looking at the layout, you can go through and you can figure out what's going on. But down the bottom, I can see you've got all these USB headers. You've got the system fan, um, RGB down here as well. Um, this is where I can see the revision 1.2. The key thing for me was here, where it's got the THBC. That's important to me because Basically, I'm going to be putting my Thunderbolt card on the X4 here, and then there'll be a little cable that goes around and connects here. And this is missing from most AMD motherboards, and this is one of the reasons that I bought this. So, yeah, fairly fairly straightforward affair. Lots of kind of USB connectors here. Lots of system fan connectors here. Very easy to work with. And I don't envision any problems with this. But I will take this off. Let's make it a little bit nicer. Oof, there we go. Looking all shiny now. So yes, that is the X570 Aorus Master.
So this is my AMD Ryzen 9 5950X and this is what's going to be going into my computer. Now if you've built a PC before, I'm sure you know this, but if you've never done it before, the process of adding your CPU to the motherboard is very simple. You lift up the locking lever and you align the CPU using the small triangle. It is very, very easy. So the lever is up. So all I need to do now is take the CPU. You can see here, and that's the CPU there if it gets in focus. And if you turn it around, you will see the triangle. So the triangle for me is here, this side. So what I want to do is turn it around so that it goes that way. That's what I want to line up. And yeah, it just kind of drops into place once you get it in the right position. There you go. A little bit harder behind the microphone, but yeah, that's it. And then you just push down the lever and we're good to go. So I hope you all have a better understanding as to what the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master Gaming motherboard, it does say gaming. I hope you have a better understanding as to what this motherboard is all about. In addition to the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X, which is now on the motherboard itself. This was just an overview as to what this motherboard was all about. But in a future video, I will look at the BIOS. I'll do more tests and I'll give you my final opinion as to what this is like to use on a day-to-day -day basis. I do encourage you to look at the official sales page and look at the features and specifications. There are a number of things that I really haven't touched upon too much, such as the direct 14 phases for the VRM. You know, this handles voltage really well. There's a lot of things like that that you should look into. And the other thing that you should look into is the connections because this does have six, six gigabyte SATA ports and it does have a lot of uh, USB options for the front of your PC as well. You can see two USB 3.2 Gen 1, two USB 2, etc. There's a lot of different options and this will be fine for pretty much every PC case out at the moment. There is a little bit of confusion though if you look at the marketing here where it's talking about 3.2 Gen 2 and you know you've got that 3.2 Gen 1 and all that there as well. This whole thing can be a little bit confusing and it's not helped by the fact that it, you know it says 3.2 Gen 1, 3.2 Gen 2 and then when you look at the back of the actual motherboard when you look at the back panel it says USB 3.1 and it says USB 3.1 Type-C. Now this isn't really Gigabyte's fault per se. If you look on USB websites, they have kind of rebranded it all and they've rebranded, for example, here they've rebranded USB 3.1 Gen 2. It's now called USB 3.2 Gen 2. So a little bit confusing this whole thing. It's not really Gigabyte's fault as far as I can see. It's just, you know, they've rebranded things and they've updated the marketing material, but the back panel still says 3.1. But just be aware of that when you're looking at it. Check out the specifications page to see exactly what this can do. This is up to date. So yeah, a little bit of confusion there, but it's something you might find on other motherboards as well. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video and please stay tuned for future videos. The one that I'll be looking at next, the next component is the Corsair EX1000 Titanium Power Supply. So I'll be taking a closer look at this in the next video. So please do stay tuned for that. But if you've got any questions about this board, you know, what it can do, etc. If you have any feedback, please do leave a comment below. Thanks as always, and I'll speak to you very soon. Take care.